Mr. Bathgate, we apparently are not going to be able to put it up on the big screen behind right. you, but we do have it on the television so yeah. that members of the committee can see your presentation. Yeah, thank you. You bet. So I'll be real quick. I've been here before. Um, for those of you who are not aware, and Mr. Bathgate, if I, uh, this, this is your presentation, is that correct? Sure. So every member of the committee also has yep. it in print in front of them. And there's a backup study that companies that supports that. So the smart meters have a switch mode power supply, which creates what we like to call harmonics or transients. And that is installed in the meter per the block diagram I've given you here in advance of the current and voltage sensors, which they call the Hall effect sensor. So whatever output of that switch mode power supply is, is feeding to the current sensors and the, and the voltage sensors of the meter. Okay? And that's an important thing. I'm going to explain why. So this is an oscilloscope graph. I have all this equipment. I have oscilloscopes, spectrum analyzers. I have all kinds of digital stuff. I, I do have an increased build in the last few months. I do have an opt-out meter on my home, a smart meter, opt-out meter. So in my home, I see a 16-volt peak-to-peak transient on top of the normal 60-cycle uh, voltage sine wave that I see that we all have grown to know, right? It's 120 volts sine wave. So the yellow lines is off my oscilloscope. That's transients, okay, that are above 60 hertz, but it injects additional voltage. So if you are not familiar with electricity, basically your 120 volt cycle it's not, it's not 120 top, not 120 bottom. It's 167 overall, it's peak to peak. And when I measured my house, and this was I made sure the heat was off. I just left the refrigerator on and a couple light bulbs. Um, I measured the, the voltage transients. And I got 16 volts peak to peak on top of my already existing 120 volts. And you'll notice the yellow lines are out of phase. They're not in the same curve. So this is injecting additional sensors that are sensing that basically there's more voltage than I'm actually using. Because I can't use this yellow line. I can only, my appliances only run from the 60 cycle. So the sensors in the, in the meter are seeing voltages that I can't consume, but it sees and counts. My bill's up about 15% which is kind of consistent with what this voltage uh, transient looks like. Okay. Now, uh, Representative Lauer, when uh, uh, Linda Kurtz was here last time, he asked her a question. He said, I've got a charger, and I've got a TV, and I've got all this other stuff. Why don't I see transients from the switch mode power supplies on those devices? Well, it's because the industry causes them to put what they call an EMC filter in there. It prevents these transients from backfeeding onto the 110 volt, 120 volt line. So it stops it, okay? But that's not in the smart meter. They never put this in. They didn't feel they had to because there was nobody to force them. But now you have a switch mode power supply which is injecting all those transients throughout the entire house. Okay. So we've all been told the meters are really accurate. They're more accurate than the old meters, right? Well. I've been looking very closely at what the American National Standards Institute uses for standard measuring meters. I'm finding very interesting things. So if you hit the bullseye, one out of 100, according to ANSI, your meter is accurate. They never mention precision. Does it repeat time after time? They don't even talk about it. Okay, I find it very interesting. Now, the analog meters that we've had for all these years, right, They've been relatively repeatable, and I think the last testimony you heard looks like that, right? I mean, all the evidence is, is such. So I find it interesting that the ANSI is basically an industry-funded group. It's not a federal-charged standards institute, okay? NIST is a national federal standards institute, not ANSI. I was stunned to find this out, okay? Because I've been doing testing 
for high voltage transients like, like surges coming from the power lines and, and causing the meters to fail. And so in that testing that I've been doing, I'm looking at the results. ANSI says it passes the high voltage transient test. When I do it, it fails. And I come to find out the ANSI standard allows the, the meter manufacturers to take the electronics out of the meter while they do the test. Like what? I was stunned to find this out, okay? Now, you heard the previous testimony of the gentleman that, like, was complaining about his bill, and suddenly the thing started going down. What happened? Well, it all depends on how you count things, right? If I do averages, you get, you know, your electric meter should be just like your gas pump, right? You pump your gas for a minute, stop running, stop pumping for another minute. Pump for another minute, stop, leave it off for two minutes. Okay, so you do this over and over again. What you're gonna think you got, the, according to the way the meters are, are being measured on peaks versus the actual totalizing, they'll think that you've been pumping gas at a rate of five gallons a minute. You do it for 30 minutes, you just let it pause. They're gonna spread that over that 30 minutes, so you're gonna wind up with a higher bill. So suddenly, this gentleman, who has no control over the, how that electric meter counts things, suddenly saw his bill go down because he complained. I wonder if everybody complained, the bills would go down. Why? Because the electronics calculation is at the control of the utility, not the consumer. So, summarizing this, Every consumer is of the total mercy of the utilities. The old analog meters, you can see, well, they gave me a reading that was really high. Let me go out to the side of the house and go look at the dials and see if it's right. If it's right, it's right. This thing, you have no clue. They could send you a bill tomorrow for $1,000 and say you owe it or we're going to shut you off. There's no transparency. You have no idea if this is working or not working. Okay. In the study, additional study I provided to you, you can see even the electronic meters when they're subjected to transient voltages are at inaccurate by as much as 10% or more. Okay. I went to um, Maple Theater in Bloomfield, Bloomfield Township uh, yesterday or Sunday. Their, their transient was 40 volts. I'll bet their electric bill is through the ceiling. So there's something going on here. And you would need a laboratory to figure it out, but guess what? The utility trucks come out and you say, I've got a complaint. They come out and they look at the meter, they stare at it and go, I think it's okay. They haven't got a clue. They don't have an oscilloscope in the truck. Okay? Much less somebody that knows how to run one. Okay? So, basically, my, my complaint is basically I'm getting high bill, I, but I have sensors in my house that can tell why it's high and what's causing it to be high. Okay? And I can tell you from what I know in my personal home that what I'm seeing a high bill from is from the transient voltages, not my appliances. Okay? I have natural gas heat. The only thing electric I've got is refrigerator and light bulbs and a TV set. That's about it. But I got a 15% higher bill. You know, I got a boiler. It doesn't use electricity. <laughs> So, you know, if I had a first forced air fan system, I guess I would see some electricity usage, but I, I don't have that. So, and I've gone to many other homes and I've seen anywhere from 24 to 36 volts transient voltages on the line introduced by the switch mode power supply. There's something wrong. Mr. Pathgate, uh, give us some idea of your professional background or as to why I'm you... an electrical engineer. I've been in the industry for about 40 years previously employed by Emerson Electric, uh, built power supplies, built power switching, high current power switching systems for utilities and for uh, buildings, industrial buildings. Um, been doing it for a long time. So I'm now retired. Thank you, sir. Representative Riley. Thank you. Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, is it possible to put uh, an analog meter in series with uh, the digital meter to see if they vary, the results vary? Yes. And that has, yes, that it has been proven to be different. In California, they did a test. They found a 10% error on the electrical meter. 
Have you have yourself? Have you tried this or no? Not yet. This, um, the house I'm living in is I don't own the house, uh, but I'm renting it right now, and I have another home I'm building. When I'm finished with that building, it will have uh, an analog meter in series with the electric meter from DTE, and I will be able to check to see if DTE is cheating me or not. Okay, thank you. Representative Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so um, have you been able to look at an older analog meter home like the gentleman that testified before you and see if his voltage spiked? There aren't any. Okay. There's no electronic so, components in the meter, and I've measured my own old analog meter. There was never any transients. So those transients are, by your experience, only in the digital meters, whether Correct. they are smart yeah. meters in or In either not. the opt-out or the not opt-out. Right, because they're the digital kind. Right. Okay. Thank you. Representative DeAnda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony today, sir. I got a question when you mentioned about your heat source. You're saying that you have a boiler system, yep. but it doesn't have any uh, power to it. So is it a freestanding type of boiler system? There's yeah. no circulating pump yeah, at yeah, all yeah, on it? No circulating pump. Okay. So it's totally efficient on just yep. on the water. It's nice. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bathgate. No